Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. Hey guys, it's Amy Gardner Dean. Welcome to Jerry's Live. It's gonna be a little noisy. I'm just gonna say that right off the bat today because we are doing what? Urban sketching in beautiful downtown Raleigh. And Katie is teasing and taunting me with an umbrella behind me to keep the phones from <laughs> to keep the phones your, from getting too hot because of the sun. You. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I'm doing it for the team, taking one for the team, for the art team even. Uh, we are at beautiful Boylan Bridge Blue Brew Pub. Amanda, you were right. I should have practiced that three times. What? I should have practiced it three times. Boylan Bridge Blue. <laughs> Boylan Bridge Brew pub ta-da it is a fantastic little pub it's a bar it's got their own beers on tap it's got a bunch of different wines by the glass cocktails how many breweries have cocktails too katie none of them that i mean okay so the swanky ones you go to i go to the a little lesser <laughs> uh fantastic food we've been uh sampling some some great pickle chips and pickle nickels pickle nickels and what was the what was the cheese thing that was cheese amazing too yes it's awesome awesome food and they've got dinner and stuff too but you can't beat this view this is really honestly the best view in Raleigh to be able to sketch from so that's why we're here and thankfully Chris and the guys here at Boylan Bridge <laughs> Yes, I, I know. And you jinxed me. Amanda is is the jinxer. If you ever meet her, just call her that jinx. So, uh, so we're going to get to some urban sketching here in just a little bit. First, if you're playing along at home in the Jerry's Artorama search box, you're going to type in JL76. That's going to pull up a list of all the different products that I'm going to show. We're going to show you some products first with some sketches that I've done from different scenes here around Raleigh. Um, just to give you some ideas of different materials you can use to do this type of thing. All right, so first we've got, probably hard to hear when I turn to the side, isn't it? All right, I'll try to be louder. We've talked about the Reflections watercolor journals and um, they come in three different sizes. This is the smallest one. For this sketch, done a little scooter that was sitting in town. Um, that's done with the accurate uh, waterproof technical pens, these. Uh, the watercolor is painted on with silver brushes, very small little Voyager. That's, yeah, that's better. The sun's a little better. Voyager travel brushes. When you've got them like this, they'll break down. You can put them right in your pocket. And for the watercolor, I actually used the Lucas Aquarell Studio Set. It's in a metal tin. It's just the very basic studio set. It's not even their professional line, but I mean, the colors ended up being really nice with this set. I'll show it one more time. That set's only 30 bucks. So for a set that's got that many colors uh, that can do artwork like this, it's very nice, very nifty, sketched on site. That's the smallest of those Reflections watercolor journals that we've talked about. Now let me go to the next one up. Raleigh has this very awesome park with a merry-go-round. <laughs> Sorry, and we're right by the Amtrak station, so we're going to hear some a train pulling out here shortly. This is the next size up for that Reflection journal. Look, Katie. That's cute. Yeah. Is a pull -in park? little pull-in park uh, horse from the merry-go-round. These, uh, it's done with the Concept brush tip pens. Just a very nice brush tip, got just enough play so that it's not too brushy, but it's not too tight. Um, you can get kind of a nice pull and turn, but that's just those three colors with that little set. And because this is a watercolor journal, it pulls it in really nice and neat. It leaves good crisp lines. So those Concept pens work really well with that paper. Are you guys hearing it okay, ladies? Just since you guys can hear the broadcast, I'm just checking yeah, it's sound. Good. It's good, You'll, you can hear, perfect. All right, just wanna make sure, so I'm talking loud enough for you guys. All right, so the next 
size up is the largest reflections aqua turtle. Uh, the nice thing about these, they're it's not the hardest bound, but it's not soft bound either. It's got a nice stiff cover. It's got that elastic band to it. In the back, we've shown this before on another episode. You can put little, you know, items in the pocket. This illustration is of Dorton Arena on the Raleigh State Fairgrounds. They don't like it because I call it the Pringles Building. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I, I had to do I had to do that so that Amanda would make Amanda just doesn't doesn't like when I do that or say giblets. So. Dorton, what did I call it? But everybody says Dorton Arena. Dorton, Dorton, Dorton. Yeah, okay. So, sure. Uh, <laughs> so this this is actually um, at the flea market on a Saturday. This was one side that didn't look quite as like overly messed up. I was walking around to the dog show. There were a few tents, but it was kind of a nice view of it. Accurate, waterproof, technical pen. Um, with this, I actually used, Richeson has a new line of travel brushes. These actually you can use with watercolor oil or acrylic, Katie. Um, they've got a bright, a flat, a filbert. Use this nice big round, even though it's a little stiffer than some of the other watercolor rounds, it still worked really nice. Held the watercolor nicely, and I think this is the biggest size, so they go down to nothing. Uh, size-wise, but these are perfect for carrying with you. Just slipping into your pocket. I know, train might be a little noisy. Uh, for the watercolor with this, the Marie's watercolor set. This is a great little set. I did a, a, some color swatches with the little paper that's included. This great little set comes with a sponge. It comes with a little ceramic dish. It's got all the colors, and then it also has an aqua brush in it. Uh, the aqua brushes are just little brushes that you can pull that tab. There's water in them, so you don't have to carry water with you. I will say, from experience of doing a few of these with the aqua brushes, I like them more than I used to. My biggest problem is I change colors constantly while I'm working, and to change colors from one color to the other, you have to kind of push it, rinse that out some, and uh, and I went through like three of the little containers of water trying to do that one because I kept going, clean, clean, I need oh, clean yeah. water. So if you tend to be like me, it may be better to do a pocket brush uh, besides with this, but this is just a very basic little set. Um, I will recommend with any of these sets, any type of watercolor set that you carry with you, if you know you're going to work specifically with one journal, do swatches in that journal on that particular paper so that it helps you know what different colors look like because that one was the first one I did without swatching and I was like, eh, that color was not what I expected. Should have done that on that paper. Um, I will show you in a little bit, I did swatch in one particular book with all the colors so you can see kind of what the sets look like in comparison to each other. So let me take this. Sorry, there's limited space to put things because we've got stuff everywhere. I don't want anything to go over the uh, railing. Aqua tote, perfect for carrying water with you if you don't want to do the aqua brush. It's just a little bag, it folds down to nothing. You can put in your purse or whatever, but you can open it up. Just take a you know bottle of water with you, dump it right in there. You've got plenty of water for your entire painting session. So that's what I would use for being out like that. Now with this one, uh, it's one of the Stillman and Burn, the Alpha Series Premium Sketchbook. It is their soft bound cover, but it's still uh, pretty durable. Just use the accurate pen with this. Just if you're going basic, you don't have a lot, you know, don't want to carry a lot, put the pen in your pocket, this slips in your purse or backpack. These were some ladies that were just having lunch outside at Lafayette Village, which is this really cool, like French style looking village in Raleigh. They were just over by the coffee shop and without them knowing I was sketching them. Um, and then this is at Starbucks at Cameron Village, Katie. I loved those, those planters were like bamboo out there and they have this just wonderful like patio terrace that is second story that looks out over the entire mall right across from the Lark Gallery if you guys were watching that episode um, with Brennan Day. 
So was was checking out that for possibly the view there, but came down here and this was far better. So, but did a little sketching as long as I was down there. So that's just a really great basic way to carry pen and paper with you. Uh, the nice thing about uh, some of the lighter weight paper with the Stillman and Burn, it will still take light washes. You don't want to do like really heavy washes with a lot of water, um, but these will take light washes as well over that. So something to consider when you're going to buy that sketchbook. You really need to look at what ultimately do you want to do. Are you going to potentially carry a watercolor set with you? Are you going to use pens? Are you going to want to use markers? Are you just going to stick with pencil? You really need to decide that kind of ahead of time before you purchase that journal, unless you're going to buy multiple ones for multiple applications. All right, the next one. Let's see. Thank you, Katie, for the shade, I'm by trying. the way. Yes. It just makes you a little I, darker I was like, in camera. Mm, yeah, that's okay. All right, so the next one, when we did the sketchbook, kind of the, you know, where do you go to kind of decide sketchbooks, everybody seemed very enamored with these Strathmore tone sketchbooks. I know that I like toned paper, especially craft paper, but this is a Strathmore toned tan sketchbook. It is a soft bound sketchbook, so it's got a little bit of play. This was at the Raleigh Ta Dog Show. The Tar Heel Circuit is in town over Labor Day weekend. This is a little corgi. I used um, the jumbo jet pencil set uh, with the white, the black, and then the two earth tones uh, to do this little corgi that was there. Thankfully, stacked dogs tend to stand for long periods of time when the judge is watching, so I was able to get enough of a drawing where I was able to refine it after, so dog shows are a great place to do urban sketching. Um, so that was just done with the Jerry's pencil and uh, the Jumbo Jet series of pencils. Now, a great pocket sharpener. There are a lot of different sharpeners that will do those larger pencils like this. There aren't a lot of sharpeners that are closed in where you can put it in your pocket without the trimmings kind of being all in your pocket or you having to constantly go to the garbage and dump it or even sharpen it over garbage and leave where you're looking at when you're drawing. The Faber-Castell one has the larger pencils, smaller pencils, fits both, has a pretty large reservoir, so you can get a good bit of sketching in before you need to go dump it out. Um, that's a fantastic sharpener. I think it's $5.99 or thereabouts. So yeah, really handy for that. All right. So not to be outdone, there was the tan, the gray, when we were at Lafayette Village, we ate at the crepes place inside. It was it was a very sweltery day, so we were by the fake fireplace. Um, again, the Jumbo Jet pencils just used actually the, the dark brown one to kind of do the underdrawing, then uh, darkened it up with the black and then the white to bring out the lighter colors. So, you know, that was just going and having lunch and doing sketching somewhere. Just while we sat at the table, had coffee afterwards, in that short amount of time, I was able to get a really nice little sketch in of a really pretty stone fireplace. So uh, that's what a toned paper can do. You just need a light and a dark, and it looks much more finished than just a regular pencil. Okay, I can get rid of the jumbo jet now. And I'm going to put this over here so we don't lose it. All right. And again, if you're just joining us, we're in downtown Raleigh. Raleigh is the capital of North Carolina. For those of you that didn't do the greatest on your geography, like, I don't know, me. <laughs> what, if I saw the picture of the map, then it was really easy, you know, that visual thing. But, so this is downtown Raleigh. Fantastic location at the Boylan Bridge Brew Pub. I didn't have to say it three times fast. I got it, Amanda. Amanda's nonplussed, okay. So, okay, that's fine. All right, so, um, so other cool locations around Raleigh to sketch. Well, if you're familiar with Raleigh, we have a donut place that's called Krispy Kreme Donuts, which everybody that's native or otherwise has heard of, knows, and is loved. Loved so much in my family back in the day when I was very, very young and could eat lots of donuts. Not now. Uh, we actually went there after our wedding in the limo uh, to get hot donuts because they make hot donuts all night and they turn on the light when they've got them and then you pull up and you eat hot donuts and it's fantastic. So with this sketch, uh, it's in one of the Reflections wirebound sketchbooks. Um, 
And this is just the little six by six, which is really cute. I did the Krispy Kreme sign. That's neon. A little harder to get the neon with watercolor. So, okay, so Frida wants the corgi, and Amanda is Jones and for the donuts. And also the great place. Okay, yeah. So this was just the sign is really cool at night. Lights up. You can see it from everywhere. Fantastic. This was just done with those, um, with the accurate pens, with the tiny little Jerry's Petite watercolor set, which is just it's more, so it's adorable. It fits in your pocket. If you're just doing sketches like these, it's perfect. If you're more of a serious watercolor person, the blue, like I found in this, is not very dark. And that was applying it. I didn't want to apply really heavy washes because the paper is relatively light. Uh, so I didn't want to really work it really dark. So, you know, it's great for colorizing sketches just when you're out and you kind of want to have an idea of color. Actually using it for a real, you know, good watercolor set, uh, you know, I would, I would upgrade to one of the other sets. There's one that's coming in a minute that I think everybody's going to be in love with uh, that we're going to get in on the 1st of October. But with these, I use the aqua brushes, just those brushes. This is the set of four. This one has the big flat, um, and then these are rounds in three different sizes. So use the aqua brushes to work on it with that. They worked fantastic with that, actually, uh, especially that big flat. Got some nice coverage with color. So that's how even in, you know, a lighter paper, this is only 70 pound paper, you can see this really isn't buckling that bad. So for something that you're gonna only occasionally do watercolor in, these little reflection journals are pretty awesome. So, um, so that is our next drawing. All right, so now we're getting to the really cool thing and the girls here hadn't seen this palette that we just got and I've got the prototype. <laughs> I'm gonna bring all this over here. All right, so so this is the sketchbook. This is one of the Stillman and Byrne hardbound sketchbooks. Now, I took this after the fact. I think I would stick to charcoal or pencil media with this because I took, took it out and it is the ivory. I wasn't as happy with the color charts that I did in the back of it, and that's kind of why I did them to see what would show up well in the ivory paper. This was um, a core set that I yes, this was a core set that I had that I was thinking of bringing along. Um, it didn't give us kind of as many colors for what I wanted to do. This is what we call the fan pan set. We're going to look at this in just a minute. 42 colors in a very, no, no <laughs> prototype for you. Amanda's already like lettering, lettering. It's going to be only $20, Amanda. So I think you can afford one on your own stipend. But I can't have it now. No, no, you don't get it now. That's a set of all of those. Um, here is the uh, the small Jerry's Petite watercolor set. This is that Lucas Aquarelle set um, that we showed with the little scooter. And then this is the set that's the Marie's. Um, you can see with the Marie's, it's a little paler color. It's not gonna give you quite the brightness and pop even if you use it really heavy. So that's a good way to kind of try stuff. Look at the color charts, try it in the sketchbook that you're thinking of using for your main sketchbook before you get out in the field and then you're not as happy with it. Now, I was happy with this drawing, started sketching the car, it drove away. Thankfully, I took a picture first. That's something I would really recommend if you're gonna do urban sketching. Look at the area that you're looking at, take a couple snapshots on your phone, then they're there. If clouds roll in and you have to hightail it out of there because of rain, then it's there for the lighting that you've got. It's there if something that you're drawing, like like people sitting at a table, they get up and walk away, the train, you're drawing that and it leaves. It gives you that ability to still have uh, the visual, you know, shot of it and do the drawing. So this was an antique car that I just saw and fell in love with and only got part of a sketch, but thankfully taking that picture. So this is actually painted with this watercolor, um, the fan pan set that I'm gonna show you now. But look how bright that, for $20, that red, Katie, is that red not? Beautiful. I, it, it blew my mind. So let's, let's look at that set. Now I was using one of the, this is my Escoda brush. I, I love the Escoda travel brushes. 
just use them all the time. This is actually the synthetic, the versatile. Uh, this is the size 12. They do make it in a Kalinske, while they can still get Kalinske, much pricier, but this is the synthetic size 12. And I think you have the list. It's a reasonable price for a travel brush that performs just like Kalinske. It is $29.49. So if you're a brush person that really likes your brushes, that big that's, size is that big? yeah, it's synthetic though. But still, that's that. still a really good deal, um, considering I think the Kalinske for like a size eight's maybe around 60 bucks or something. All right, so this is the fan pan. And this is kind of, to me, the uh, the star of the show for this. Has a water brush, Amanda. No, you're excited about that. But Amanda, look at this. So here's a little palette. Here's a little palette thing. You can pull your colors up there. Then you've got, you know, oranges. Then you've got your reds. You've got darker reds going into violets. You got greens. Oh, I thought Amanda was going to come around and try to take it. <laughs> she ran away. Blues. Then you've got all of your earth tones. So, 42 colors. My only complaint about this, Katie. And I thought I'd have more complaints because I thought the colors were not going to be as vibrant. What is it? They were incredibly vibrant. There's not a paint's gray or a black. Which, okay, so there's no black. Plenty of colors that you can make a chromatic. You can make a chromatic and you've got the mixing room to do it here. With this many colors, you don't need to mix. What, what color do you need to make other than your chromatic black that's not in this set with that many colors? This is perfect because look. And they're decent little chunks of color in it. I'm, can you see, can they see it with that? It's just, they're so cool. So, so anyway, that's going to be called the fan pan set. Has the little kind of hard plastic shell box to go in it. Fantastic little set. So that was what that, and again, that vibrant of a red for a set, uh, that's $20. That's amazing. Those go on sale. We get them in stock. Uh, the website says it's slated for the 1st of October. So... How do you kind of ease into getting started? How do you kind of, where do you kind of jump off at? Because I know looking at a scene like this, that's a lot. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot kind of in your face. If, if you're not really as practiced of an artist with drawing, I'm taking my food. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I probably shouldn't eat while I talk because they'll be like, mwah, mwah, pickle chips, watch me draw. Um, if you're not really sure where to start, and you're not as practiced of an artist, some of these urban sketching books actually might be a really good idea to look at and page through. One of these actually has some lesson plans, just kind of a, here's what I want you to do, go out and do this. Great um, different you know, views. They show some different photos, kind of, of how he's like sizing up the scene, different, different materials that you can use you know, goes through a bunch of different things. Progression of, you know, working from multiple sketches. It's just a really, really awesome book. It's called The Urban Sketcher, Techniques for Seeing and Drawing on Location by Mark Taro Holmes. Um, even does demonstrations with how to sketch a captive subject, uh, you know, long views, short views, people when they're moving, kind of how to get those basic shapes down composition even kind of when you're adding color out in the field how to kind of pull it to the edge to just leave blank kind of overall color without getting really nitty-gritty actually doing you know a more serious watercolor so it's a great book and this is one that I would recommend I really like this guy's drawing style and with this it's all his own work if you want something maybe that gives you the ideas of kind of multiple artists multiple artist styles Sketch City, Tips and Inspiration for Drawing on Location. This is your book. It's a nice, big, hefty book with lots of different people's artwork in it. Um, color, style, I mean, just from more cartoony to a little more, you know, color to kind of, you know, 
different styles, different artists, kind of their recommendations, their suggestions for how you do it, how you start. Uh, this is a really nice book. Sorry. Once in a while, we're going to get some of that. That was probably Urban loud, sketching. wasn't it? Yeah, Urban Sketching. Ta-da! Uh, but this is a really nice book, just kind of to give you some ideas, examples, different styles. So either one you really can't go wrong with. It kind of just depends on what you're looking for to get out of that book. The Urban Sketcher, a little bit more of kind of a, a rough class in actually urban sketching. So um, what do you carry your stuff around in? All these items here that you've seen, um, except for those two books, uh, obviously not not the Pache box, but but the pencils that we've got over here and the sketchbook all came in both these bags. Everything was packed in it. So we've shown these bags at, at infinitum, haven't we? But this was like the super surprise to me. They yes, like they do, no, and they're and they're durable and and no one's been able to destroy them yet. So. And let me look at the price for the sizes. Oh, maybe I didn't put the bags in here. Maybe if the girls, if you can put the link up to the bags. Not just for urban sketching, these things are helpful for everything. We showed them on my favorite things when we did the birthday giveaway. So, you know, these two bags, all of those supplies came in. All these sketchbooks, all these watercolors, all these brushes. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. So, perfect for carrying all of those supplies along with you. So, the only other thing that I can think of is we're gonna start sketching in one of these little Strathmore sketchbooks. Besides, if you wanna work in just regular pencil, and pencil in some ways is the easiest, if you're one of those people that feels like you may need to make a lot of corrections, that's probably gonna be your best medium to just go with regular graphite pencils because they can erase. And there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever helps you build confidence helps you improve your sketching speed, that's gonna make you a better artist. So Faber-Castell has this fantastic little set. All these pencils, 12 pencils, uh, an eraser, a small travel eraser, and even a small little pencil sharpener. Um, I would recommend getting that, getting that larger two-hole one that will work for these and it's small enough to slip right inside. Come in this little zippered bag with a clip. You can just clip it on your belt loop. It's a fantastic set of pencils just to be able to use. You'll have your lighter pencils, your B's, or your uh, H's, your HB, your B, then all of your darker B's so that you've got a fuller range of gradients so that you can be sketching in a lighter pencil before you go in with that heavier pencil that's gonna be harder to erase. You know, get your basic sketch down. So that's a fantastic little set. Um, and so I think we're gonna use that. Katie's gonna make me sketch. Yep. This, this is under 20 bucks for all the pencils. For 12 with an eraser, with a pencil, or a pencil sharpener, and with that bag. So um, I sure hope those clouds aren't gonna be rainy. It's all Don't of a sudden it's much it. darker. Now that sea saying it will make sure it doesn't jinx it. Yeah, that's true. Yes, we have the mountains here, so it gets darker earlier. Um, all right, so I think what we'll do is we'll just look at kind of some basic sketching, kind of how you lay in a scene. Now we've talked before in some of our drawing, our drawing episode about how sometimes the negative space is as important to draw as the positive space. Urban sketching is kind of the place where you need to employ that. If you're starting to get frustrated with the, sh the you know, if you're drawing a building, if you're drawing you know, like this grain elevator here, some of those types of things. Work on the space around the item where it comes to the edge of the item. Focus as much on that as the item itself. That push and pull of negative and positive will help you find the shape far easier. And, you know, you'll be less frustrated than if you're just drawing the item itself. With the skyline, that means that negative space where the airflow is around those buildings pay as much attention to that as getting all the windows perfect and the levels. You don't have to so much focus on that. So, so what about? Okay, I'm still good. All right. Yeah. So I've not done urban sketching in front of people before. So this oh. is going to be, this is, I mean, other than, you know, out and about and people kind of come and look over your shoulder and I 
usually have headphones on, so I don't have to say anything. Ah, uh, the sketch was pretty quick. The watercolor was uh, probably less than 15. Probably less than 15. Uh, it was the watercolor, the the watercolor that took longer. So, and the watercolor sometimes, especially that day, was like 98 degrees. Was not gonna sit there and do the watercolor. I roughed in a sketch and was gone because that was just too much. I kind of tweaked it some at home to make some darker shapes and things like that. So, and you know what? We are gonna have to do this in a darker pencil lead. So I would normally start with something that's going to be so light you probably wouldn't be able to see it on this paper especially now that it's more overcast do you think it'd be better to use the jumbo jet just to make it a little bit easier to see i can do a let's start with that one and we'll see how it works we can see it oh with with this i'll yeah. do like a 5b we'll, we'll try with the 5b and go from there while we are doing this, this is really, I've, I've, we've gone through a lot of products and I understand that and I wasn't trying to rush anything, but I didn't want to take any questions until we were to this point so that I can answer questions and sketch at the same time. So if you've got questions about anything that you've seen, go ahead and shoot and the girls will holler them to me. Do you think the fan pan has a half pan in it? Uh, I would imagine that's the fan pan is that a full half yeah amanda wanted to know one of our youtube viewers is asking if that fan pan each of those little kind of flat pieces of color is going to be the equivalent to a half pan i'm gonna say no and the reason i'm gonna say no besides just trying to you know figure and work out the math there's no reason for me to do that if that is twenty dollars and there are that many colors in it a, you're looking for portability. You're not looking for a full half pan. It, it's very concentrated. It was just taking a swipe or two with the brush. So you don't need, I mean, think about most people that do watercolor. A half pan can last you near forever unless yeah. you're, if you're a serious watercolorist, the can, chances are good that you're probably not working in half pans, right? For the most part. I'm not, that may be a hasty generalization, but I don't know people that are specifically watercolor artists that would probably use half pans, anything for more than just sketching. So I would say no, not for that price, because for that price, 42 colors that were full half pans would be a heck of a lot more. Yes, Amanda and YouTube. Um, she says that she was told to reflection sketchbooks have perforated, perforated pages. They must have taken less pages. No, the, okay, so Judy has asked about the perforated pages on the reflection sketchbook. I'm gonna go, along with that Judy and say on anything that's perforated does that give that paper kind of less strength as far as staying in the notebook the perforations are actually stronger than like the the edges that you're going to get those frayed edges that are in your spiral binding those will pull out before that perforation comes off with the perforation in some of these you actually have to bend the paper back and forth to pull it out where it's like one full full kind of pull across the border. Um, I think that the um, the Reflections watercolor ones are a little harder to get out, but it's also 140 pound paper. The regular refre Reflections, I've never had any of those come out with on the perforation. If it's been something where something gets caught and tugged, it's pulled out from the actual wire binding versus that perforation. So that's a good question. Frida, did Frida have a question? All right. A jacket pocket not including the sketchbook um, she's asking what supplies would fit in there if you're wanting to do color something like that fan pan set or uh, one of the other smaller watercolor sets is gonna be perfect I mean most jacket pockets unless it's a really slim like jogging one with a shorter pocket that's gonna fit in pocket brush and one of uh, either a pencil if you're not really comfortable yet uh, drawing with ink without a pencil under drawing or this are going to work a pencil obviously you will you can erase the lines after you do the watercolor lightly and it will get rid of those lines but I always use the pen I've just been drawing with a, a straight pen since college now instead of a pencil when I'm doing this kind of sketching um, 
those those things with the water bag and then whatever sketchbook you want I mean the water bag can be folded even one more time again so thank you very much for the question other questions girls we're going to go ahead and uh I think they're eager to see you draw. oh boy okay because because Amanda's all about the pressure sure uh huh. That's true. I I know you. All right. You may need to move these a little closer I, if you can, just because I'm worried that I will forget to keep turning to talk. One last question. Sure. One last question. Yeah, yeah. I, I see you waving, Frida. Okay. What? Yeah, I can see her. Um, will the box easily flat for watercolor painting? It will. Uh, they're asking with the poche box. If that's gonna lay flat you can lay it flat for watercolor you can put it up for oils for drawing you can tilt it forward even for pastel it's kind of however you want to adjust it the arm on this here on the side is also fully adjustable so it's not gonna be a problem you can do whatever angle you want it with very easily all right so are we ready okay She's gonna move some of you guys closer so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, so I'm gonna break this down into just the very basic skyline. There's so many buildings to choose from. It's really good to either, until you get practiced at this, I feel like I'm like, I should be looking back and forth, back and forth. Until you get practiced at this, you're probably gonna to want to pick kind of a section to work on and go from there. Now, if this was just me out here, the city skyline is really awesome, but I love this big, I think it's actually like a, gravel silo that they do concrete from uh, because just kind of the remnants of what's left down there. I love that and I love all the rust on it and um, Barbara Johnson I could totally see her painting that couldn't you? Oh down, the train yeah. thing yeah the train and all that. Um, Barbara Johnson's one of our viewers who I've been out doing kind of plein air painting with and I guess helped her take photos for urban sketching so and painting so you know this is a really cool subject I would just normally do that but we'll try to work on the skyline kind of here so I'm gonna take kind of this area from over right if you can see the Wells Fargo building off to the left kind of not include it and kind of go from there over to about where that silo is and just kind of try to block in the main shapes now obviously we're urban sketching and this is gonna be shorter so it's not going to be specific. Some things are going to be closer, some things a little further away, but all we're doing is just trying to kind of record the scene that we see. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. So are there other questions while we're doing this? What may I have to do? Huh? Do what now? I'm trying to see if we can see what you're doing. Do we need to do the other? Okay. So, so we need to pull out the the Jerry's jumbo jet, Katie. Okay. Hold on. She's just seeing how dark this is. Too hard to see. Do we need to go with the jumbo jet? Probably, yeah. Okay. Hold on then. Yeah, you're right there. Okay. So the jumbo jet's what we're gonna use to show this. I don't think the jumbo jet would be what I would use because this is an oil pencil. It's a lot harder to get a nice light line until you've got a good grasp on kind of your heavy handedness. But what the heck, right? Okay. Is that better? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's still gonna be a little light for this initial first little bit, but yeah. This is gonna be very hard to get shading because of this angle that this is at. This is not I we've got this up on this actual box so that you guys can see it for viewing. I would have it flat on this brick wall and be drawing because there's gonna be issues with me really being able to shade really easily and all that. For the sake of demonstration, this is what we've got though, guys.
You guys have questions, by the way, while we're... <laughs> yep. I don't know if they can see that in the screen. Can they see it? can't go more than 20 miles an hour through the town, actually. Don't ask me. Don't ask me why I know that. Huh? Just careful when you turn around. Yeah. Okay. All right. So basic shapes kind of block... What are you dancing? Katie's <laughs> dancing. I can see her off in the corner of my vision. It, I'm not sure whether to be disturbed or... I feel like there should be like, oh, she was doing the train honk whistle. Okay. All right, girls. Do you have any questions while we're going? No. no. I'll let you know. Yeah, I, I bet you will. Just okay. Me draw, so okay. Don't feel weird. Just draw. I feel weird. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what this little outcropping is up there, Katie. Isn't that weird? What size sketching pad is that? Uh, it's on the list. It's on the list for one of the... Well, look on the list. Huh? Right by 11, I think? Uh, probably right around there, yeah. Probably five and a half by 12, maybe, or 15, I don't know. Oh, I don't, I don't like how. The other thing that helps when you're doing this is to keep a nice sharp point. That's the one thing that these it's jumbo jets the get. It's on the list. It's one of the last ones that, one the on the last, yeah. Oh, five by 12. All right, see, there we go. There we go. Ah, the other thing that's, Part about this is it's getting smeared everywhere. All right. <laughs> Katie, with this up, it's so hard to reach around it. Can I turn the box so you can see it, Katie? Right. I need your help. I need to turn the box so it's easier for me to reach this. Okay, go ahead. Can they still see it all right if we do that? Yeah, like it just that. blocks the view a little bit more, but. Okay, I can't, I can't okay. get, I can't get like vertical lines with it the way that it is. Let's get the eraser out. Will that erase? Huh? Yes, it will. The knobs on the side were making it so I couldn't uh, get my hand up and over the edge. All right. Okay. Should an apple box for you. Hmm? Should have had an apple box for me to stand on. An apple box for me to stand. Yes, because that would have ended so well, like <laughs> in a broken leg, probably falling off the thing. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to refine some of my building kind of shapes and sizes. I don't know. They probably can't see over this. There's a little, little tiny building. That I like the look of. Um, and we're gonna come up here just to check kind of angles. All right. And these don't have to be exact. You can just kind of use lines to kind of get your stories in, get your, um, you know, some of the banks of windows. I've never drawn big buildings. This is very interesting, Katie. All right, let's find this before we lose this edge here that we got going. This one building is like a stair step. Ah, it's getting soft so quickly, it's really hard to get a good edge on it. That's 
that's the jail, isn't it? <laughs> I just, I was like, those windows are really that's odd. The jail. There's the jail. This building here is the jail. So something to consider. You've got kind of why would those windows be weird and little? That's the jail. Okay. <laughs> All right, Amanda's choking on a pickle nickel. Okay, for my trees, I'm just kind of giving a basic shape and I'm gonna kind of scribble those in. There is a, a very unhappy little dog somewhere. they've got questions, tell them to fire away. Where's the coolest place that anybody has ever gone and done urban sketching or tried to do urban sketching or taken pictures to do artwork from this urban style sketching? Because maybe they can tell them and then we can talk about it while we're doing this because this feels really weird for me just to be standing here. Okay. I, what you're doing. Uh, I, I, sometimes my mouth doesn't work when I'm... <laughs> Barbara loves buildings. <laughs> my name is Barbara Johnston and I'm a, a building freak. All right. Ah. This building is going to be modeled from... There's a little tower up there with some satellite dishes. All right. It's really hard to see what's back behind those other buildings because there's like stuff that you can't really. It just kind there's of a building? Back. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. You kind of know there's a building, but it's kind of falls into the background. All right. something you can do with this also is carry a small straight edge. I tend not to do it when I'm outside but at home I will take it and kind of help if I'm drawing something that's got a building or a car or something like that and just if I know my line needs to just be that little bit straighter I'll just take it and use that small like a plastic straight edge. So all right. Are you picking and choosing your buildings or are you kind of no, I'm kind of shading in some stuff that shouldn't be shaded just because I can't, there's so much going on, I can't see very well kind of where it ends and begins and all that. So I'm kind of just picking and choosing a little bit. The light's helpful right now because you can kind of see a little bit. It's getting some shade on some of those buildings so it's a little easier to, it's so weird that that rooftop thing has trees up there, Katie. See those little trees up there? It's the, um, that's the Dillon. That's the, over the warehouse district, the Dillon warehouse. Oh, it's a, okay. either a bar and restaurant patio thing. Well, so that's you go sit cool. and That's the one I was saying. That would be the place to go do urban yeah, sketching from. Uh, Riley, if you don't mind looking down on the, uh, go up there. Yeah, that's something definitely to consider. You may have an urban sketching group and not know it. Yeah. I realized we did and was like, oh, well, yeah, hey, then. Tuesday, Saturday of month at 2. The one here means it can. It's the second wow. Saturday of the month at 2. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Google. Mm -hmm. Google, Google, Google. This I is know like, a lot of our, our stores have a group that kind of yeah, meets up surrounding our us. Our it's, New York store does some, um, a paint out for that, actually. Yes. Okay, this is like some sort of weird tapestry here. I don't know if they can see it. If, is the thing blocking it? No, you can see okay. it. Okay. It's just kind of a cool little tapestry, so I'm putting that on there. Now, you don't have to get your floors exact because there's no way. I mean, if you really wanted to be crazy about it and you could take pictures and do it, but I'm just kind of putting in some windows. Again, look look up to where you're drawing more often than not looking up. Just it will help. Those really go a long way over there, don't they? This would be where I would get that little straight edge out and kind of. Is this dark enough, Katie? It's okay. They can see it all right. Yeah, it's going in and out with the sun. With the light, yeah. But... Ah, the lefty is striking again. I'm getting it up you Huh? I'm yes, go ahead. has like a little weird window over here. Just don't have to be true to scale. You can just kind of bump it however you want. The reflection from that one window is getting me like right in the mm -hmm. eyeball. All right, so this building up here, that's just killing me. I don't know if, literally, I don't know how it's getting me immediately in the eyeball. It's, it's real bright. <laughs> Good night it is. Okay. I'm trying to draw light because I'm, as soon as I draw heavy, it's, and there's nothing like, like, I'm bumping myself in the chest trying to reach around this, so it's not, uh, uh that's too far over. So, I, I know this is too far over from here to here. Since this is just a sketch, I'm just going to leave it for now. If I was worried and I really wanted to have a good image of this, I might take photos and worry about it later. I'm not going to. Train yard is busy. That's our new train station. That is. It's Amtrak. Isn't it? Rally at Central Central Station. This is like the fourth train that's come in since we've been down here at 430, isn't it? Yeah, it's been interesting because some of them in cargo and some of them have been passenger. Yeah. Alright. So I've kind of gone down and this changes there. Let's pull that out. Now we're getting the sun from this way again. All right. Anybody else done urban sketching in places other than Barbara? I did a castle one. You did? I did. It was awesome. Yes. But then I gave it away. Uh. Oh, what? Somebody said her dogs are going nuts looking for the dogs that barked. Uh huh. That's funny. Our Sheltie does that too. Uh huh. Okay. All right. 
coração. All right, that kind of goes that way the whole way up. Oh, it's got more windows over here. Hey, Amy. Yes, Amanda. Really, for urban sketching, you're recording what you're seeing. Uh, Amanda's asked if you pick a focal point. I mean, you could do that. A focal point's really like, urban sketching is more to be out, to be kind of recording what you see, to be kind of outside and enjoying yourself. Urban sketching isn't really where you're going to make finished works that you're gonna necessarily sell. I mean, I think people will buy cool sketches and things like that, but I think it's the uniqueness of the sketch and kind of what you're doing in the immediacy of it, not so much the, you need a focal point and you need composition. Obviously, you know, you would want something to kind of have balance. I think that's probably more what you should worry about, don't you think, Katie? Point, yeah. um, just so it's not like, you know, three buildings over here and then a giant hole, something that gives it balance, something that kind of anchors it some to the page. Does that make sense? How are we doing on time, Katie? Almost 6.30. Okay. Well, we'll go a little bit longer on this and then we'll hang yeah, it up. Yeah, we're light right now. It's real pretty. <laughs> yeah. Now, this would have been cool to uh, have done with ink pen and then go back and do watercolor over it to take photos to get this light where uh -huh. it's the same and actually then use that to do the watercolor off of either here or you know, at home later, the uniqueness of it is it's this way now, it's not gonna be this way in 10 minutes, in 20 minutes, in an hour. So you really want to kind of take the time and record it as you go along. I mean, if I was gonna sit and sketch this scene and I was gonna do it in ink, or even if I'm drawing the scene and I'm gonna take this and go home and make a painting of it later um, and kind of decide what to kind of add and, and subtract, I would want to, you know, there was clouds earlier, right, Katie? This wasn't as bright and kind of reflective and, and pretty. No, it's have, gray and overcast. Yes. We go live. Have my phone, be taking pictures kind of as I'm going through the cycle, then kind of pick and choose as to what I want to do when I actually go to do the watercolor on this. Yeah, it was kind of um, that way, wasn't it? All right, I've got a... Ah, uh -huh. my arm's getting in the way. Is there, it was reflecting right in the lens, Katie? It's not reflecting. What I'm getting back from that building is not, not getting them in the... Uh... No, it's beautiful. Okay, good. Because, <laughs> whoo, I look over there and I get my retinas fried and then I look towards the camera and I get my retinas fried. So I'm kind of getting it. So, they want to see. Huh? They okay. See. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Trying to get as close as I can. Go ahead. <laughs> this is weird. Trying not to get the shadows. Now this is like my college professor leering over my shoulder. As long as nobody grumbles now. It's just funny because I can see the microphone shadow. <laughs> So this is fun, it's good practice. You'll become faster as you kind of go along. 
I really would take a pic. This area here on this kind of crazy building, it's almost like patchworky, isn't it? Uh -huh. With the different colors. I don't think I would it's attempt that here. I think I would, unless I had, you know, uh, an hour or two to sit here yeah. and work on that, I think I would take good photos okay. and, uh, and do something with that later on because that's just a little too much for, and I cannot look at that, <laughs> I can't look at that building. Um, so I would be doing this part from photos since I'm getting a retina burn from it. Um, well, and we're back in the end of time anyway, so yeah. you can always finish it and post a picture of it. Yeah. I need to take it. Well, you've got good shots of it, right, from the camera view? Not without the J-Box in the way, so you Okay. Well, my phone is in my purse, so I'll have to get a shot after the back and then we can post it. Okay, I'm doing what I keep saying not to do, which is keep your pencil sharp. I'm letting it get dull because I'm trying to hurry. Is this giving a pretty good, uh, everybody a pretty good uh, idea of kind of how this works? What time did we start sketching? Right about six. Okay. What time is it now? About six thirty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not bad. A little half hour dealing. There's some stuff up there, but I can't. I'm getting so much glare, I just can't see. And there's a tiny water tower up there. All right, so we're almost out of time. Does anybody have any last questions, girls, while you're... Okay. Why did you choose a sketchbook that is entirely landscape rather than a bird? Because it is beautiful. Because it's a landscape of a cityscape that we're doing instead of a vertical? <laughs> she asked why I would pick this as opposed to a portrait, a portrait style where it's that vertical. If I was drawing that really cool thing there that I just am going to take some pictures and do drawings of, I would turn that on its end and I would draw that. Um, I think that whenever you pick something that's like, there's a difference between kind of, you know, vertical this way and then you get, you know, or horizontal this way and then you get a lot of extra. I think anytime you kind of add extra to the side, it makes it more dynamic, don't you think? When it's rather than just you know your typical eight by ten, your typical eleven by fourteen uh, kind of scale, I think that that's just cooler. Four by six would be dull. It would cut out a lot of interest in it, where that really gives us some kind of across the board interest. Um, you know. Any other last questions, girls? Uh, no, because it's done in oil pencil. There's no, she asked if we're gonna add watercolor to this. If this was done in ink, it'd be great. If this was regular graphite and not this oil pencil, I could go over this probably. Uh, in ink, I gotta erase the pencil and then add watercolor. This weight paper is not gonna take watercolor and especially heavy washes. It might be able to do a little ink if I wanted to do gray values. Yeah but still it would have to be pretty dry. Uh, so this would definitely just be a practice drawing that with this and photos I did, I could actually take it and, and do further sketching from this at home. So, yep, no, no watercolor for this. It's just gonna be, be black and white. Sure. Is it hard to see? It's so bright, it's so bright on the back of the screens. Oh yeah, that's definitely. All right, so as soon as we're done here, I will get a couple shots with my iPhone, make sure that I've got good photos to work from where I'll be able to actually kind of ignore that reflection on that one building that's blinding me. <laughs> so, um, so this has been Urban Sketching. Feel free to leave any other questions that you come up with. 
if you are in Raleigh, if you're in the North Carolina area, if you're gonna be ever coming through Raleigh, this is a fantastic location. Best view uh, in, in four out of four people that are Jerry's employees <laughs> that are standing right here think this is the best view in Raleigh so uh, definitely so and and where it's a, a nice scale you're not too high you're not too low uh, it's a great view so we're at Boylan Bridge Brew House Brew Pub Brew Hub Pub I, yeah so that's where you want to go great fantastic patio uh, fantastic food and drink trains about to fantastic <laughs> view and the trains gonna gonna be bringing us out so Again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it was JL76. If you're looking for any of those supplies, put that in the search box uh, on jerryzodorama.com. It will pull up all the cool things that we showed you. And, um, and we'll see you next week. Next week, what is it? Watercolor 101. Oh, yeah. How to. Just some very bare bones basics. How to do a wash. How to control the watercolor. We'll talk about pigment, granulating, non-granulating all sorts of very good beginner stuff that uh, that I actually had to go over and look up because I, I don't remember my watercolor class at 13. So uh, so I'm learning some things with it too. So, so join us next week for that. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you later. Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live.